Sea of Thieves was originally announced in E3 2015. The game was being developed by Rare, or otherwise known as Rareware. Rareware has been around, it seems, since the beginning of time. They were most known for making their first party games for Nintendo, like Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong Country, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and GoldenEye 007. The thing that people had waited for them to make for so long was Banjo 3, which they never got. Except for that one game where you built fucking cars the whole time! And I... Holy shit! We'll always love you! I can't believe you did this to me! God damn it! How could you do this to me? Then, the unspeakable happened. Rare was purchased by Microsoft. It seemed that they had died. They went on to make mediocre games for Microsoft and moved on from that to making mediocre Kinect games for Microsoft. Rareware, as we knew it, was dead. Until E3 2015, when Rare was trying to get back to where it was so long ago. The main announcement for games so large, you could have limitless possibilities. They said it was their most ambitious title yet. They announced Sea of Thieves, an open world MMO pirate game, filled with treasures, dangers, and plunders. I didn't find out about the game until E3 2017. I saw the game and said, you know, that looks good, uh, I'll see if it's actually good when it comes out. And I was very skeptical about the game when I first heard of it, you know, thinking things like, will there be enough variety, is the game going to get really repetitive, so I waited, and I suppressed my hype. Cause, let's be fair, I found out about it at E3, and... We, we've all seen the games that have been at E3 so many times that have been incredibly misleading. Got you, fucking Sean, Sean, man's gay. However, I couldn't suppress my hype for that long. The more and more I waited for this game to come out, the more and more I got interested in it. Then, the first alpha came out for it. I saw it come out, and I was immediately pulled into the game. It looked so fun. It looked like it was going to be one of the best games of 2018. It seemed like I could have so much fun with the game. I watched as more and more things came out about the game, and there were more and more betas that came out, and the future for this game had looked bright. It looked like Rareware was finally getting back to where it was. Rareware had seemed to be, well, reborn. Then, on March 20th, 2018, the game was released, and people were not happy. <coughs> there were so many people angry with this game, and there were so many people defending it. There was a civil war about Sea of Thieves on the internet. No one could come to an understanding or respect other people's opinions, but then again, this, this is the internet that we're talking about. Does, does anyone respect people's opinions on the internet, really? However, before all of this happened, I had gotten my hands on the game to see for myself. And you know what? The game? It's it's fun. The game is it's so fun. It's amazing how fun it is. It, it's some of the most fun that I've had in a video game. The game is beautiful. It has the best water that I've ever seen. Subnautica, a game completely composed of water, doesn't even come close to how amazing it looks here. But, I am getting sidetracked. Need, need my water break. While the game is so fun, it doesn't come without its flaws. Let's start with the quests. There are three factions, the Gold Hoarders, the Order of Souls, and the Merchant Alliance. While I am glad that they took time to put more than one quest in the game, they all, in a way, play out the, the exact same. You go to an island, pick up whatever that faction wants you to pick up, go to an outpost, and sell it to them. This is what you will be doing again and again. While there are other things like shipwrecks, they mostly just have more things to turn into those factions that aren't a part of the voyages that you go on. That isn't exactly variety rare. Ugh. Nice try though. Another thing is the AI. The skeletons can be incredibly easy to kill. Although they are very accurate with the guns they have, you can kill them easily and then eat a banana, which are super abundant everywhere, and your health will be back to normal. The skeletons are also afraid of water. I mean, I mean, you're not gonna drown, bud. You're already dead. These skeletons can be killed simply by holding down the attack button with your sword to do the little super attack it has. This can also be used to launch yourself through the water to swim around fast, but let's be fair, swimming is one of the slowest things I've experienced in this game, so without it, I'd probably want to die more than I already do. So without very much challenge to get these quests done, it can get tedious and repetitive really fast. Another problem with the game is griefing. Yes, griefing is pretty much in every game. You can't really escape it, but in here, sometimes it can be a problem. A galleon with four people could be bored, park next to a ship, and just kill them over and over again without sinking it, 
Yes, your team can vote to scuttle the ship to automatically sink it, but if you have any treasure on board, you can kiss it goodbye. Another problem with this is if your crew is still alive when this ship sinks, you need to go to a mermaid to teleport to the new ship. And then the four people in the galleon could just surround the mermaid and kill you, forcing you to go back to the Fairy of the Damned and wait for however long to respawn and finally get back to the ship. Now a flaw, unfortunately, is the Kraken. I was most hyped for this feature in the game, but somehow they fucked that up too. The Kraken isn't what you think it is. It's not some giant monster that terrifies you and strikes genuine fear into your heart. It's tentacles. I'm serious. You don't get to see the body of the Kraken at all, the whole thing is just tentacles that you shoot until they dive back into the water. You may think that the water turning all black around you is just a sign that the Kraken is there, but in my eyes, it's just there to keep you from looking underwater to see the body, because no, you cannot see the body if you jump into the water. Now, I won't count this one really as a flaw since I have no problem with this, and I'll leave it up to preference. There is no progression in the game. Even if you stick to the grind and do the missions constantly, they will only amount to cosmetics. I can see what they were doing with this to keep everyone on the same playing field, but some people want to feel like they're actually getting more powerful as they play the game more. So it's really up to you whether you think it's a bad thing or not, it's just a thing to keep in mind if you're thinking about getting this game. However, with all these flaws in the game, somehow I'm still having fun with it. It's so confusing to me how a game with so many flaws could let me have so much fun. But anyways, let me move on to the positives. The game itself is beautiful. Everything is so vibrant and colorful. And the water is the best I've ever seen in a video game. Everything just pops. Nothing nothing blends in with anything. Except the fucking towers! The towers look like ships! Fuck piece of shit! You can see something and immediately know what it is. Even though that the AI isn't the best, it is very satisfying to chop down the skeletons and shoot them with your guns. And when you're fighting another player with ship on ship action, when you finally get a hit with your cannonballs, it is so satisfying to know that you can actually be a threat to them. The way you sail your ship isn't too complicated, but it's also not too simplistic. You need to catch the wind by turning your sails, and if you can't see, you can raise the sails a tiny bit, but that will also decrease your speed. Sea of Thieves is a fun game for a while. Sea of Thieves is a bit of a mixed bag, and yes, I know I didn't address the skeleton forts or raids that are in the game, but it's just quests for the Order of Souls. You kill skeletons, a boss comes out, you kill him, and you get a bunch of loot. More fetch questing. But getting back on track, this game is nowhere near No Man's Sky levels of bad. No Man's Sky lied to us. It, it lied to us about the features that would be in the game. It lied to us about what the game really would be and what they said we would get in terms of features in this game is what we got unfortunately that is all we got that, that that's it there's just nothing else to it that's the problem with the game now i hope and i pray that sea of thieves will get better that it will turn out like the division or rainbow six or destiny N not destiny 2 that that game is shit. and that it will get better as time passes but, as of now, the game is fun, subjectively, but, objectively, it is, and I am sorry for saying this, I'm sorry for using this saying, it is as wide as an ocean, but as deep as a puddle. What up, it's your boy, applications are still in the backlog, thank you all for watching the video, this was a bit of a different video, but, I kinda wanted to do something else, cause, uh, doing the reddit, post videos are getting a little repetitive at this point. I just needed a breath of fresh air, and I know that this video is going to do absolute dog shit compared to the Reddit videos. It's going to get about 100, 200 views, while if I upload a Reddit video, it's going to get 7,000. I don't really give a shit at this point. It's not like I'm making any money off of YouTube anyways. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please share this so that my channel doesn't die. Uh, if you want more of these types of videos, leave a like. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.